I jointed this hexagon together using a bird's mouth bit a few weeks ago. Now granted, the joinery here isn't perfect because the depth of the bit was set a little bit too deep. The idea is to run a rounding toolpath on this hexagon, creating a cylinder for use on the Onefinity Revolution rotary. The main reason for creating stock this way is to make it lighter for shipping and to avoid wasting the unused material in the center. Hollow stock can be used in a variety of applications, primarily those that do not need to be carved deeper than the width of your hexagon wall. In this case, it's three quarter of an inch. The great thing is that with Onefinity, you're really only limited to your number of axes and creative ability. There are plenty of creative projects you can make from a hollow hardwood cylinder. Some simple examples include rolling pins, lamp bases, tool holders, or even totem pole segments. You could also design things like candle lanterns with carved cutouts, speaker housings, or decorative columns with spirals or patterns. Let's start this carve by taking a look at how I set this toolpath up in VCarve Pro. Okay, so Vectric actually does a really good job of making this easy to set up. So we're just gonna click on create a new file. Now the dimensions of my hexagon, I measured at 17 inches. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract three quarter inch on each side for a total of 1.5 inches. So I'm gonna go with a length of 15 and a half. My diameter, I measured at 3.98. We wanna make sure that the Z0 position is set on cylinder axis. This is because the zeroing plate attached to the Onefinity Revolution or zeros the bit to the center of the cylinder. Make sure your XY datum is set to the lower left and click on OK. Now, once you get in here, you're gonna go ahead and turn your 3D view on. Click on this square button up here so you can get an idea of what it is you're looking at. I like to go ahead and pop up my Show Toolpaths tab. Now you're gonna go up here to Gadgets, Wrapping Tool, and then Create Rounding Toolpath. This is gonna bring up a screen where we're gonna have a couple of different options. My blank is a hexagon, um, so I'm not gonna run a square blank because I'm, I'm pretty sure my quarter inch Jenny can handle it, um, the excess on those corners. I think it can handle it in one or two passes. I'm probably gonna end up doing about three of these in iterations though, depending on where we're at after the first one. Okay, so something I wanted to point out here, you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna see cylinder dimensions down here. 3.98 is what we input at the beginning of this process. This is going to be what we're trying to achieve. So what we need to do is we need to go back out and set the model to what we're trying to do. Um, so my first pass, I wanted at 3.75. So I'm gonna go back up here to model, or sorry, edit, and then click on job size and position and then I'm gonna change my diameter to what it is that I'm trying to achieve. So we'll go 3.75 for the first pass. Now we know that the diameter is actually 3.98, so this is how much we're planning on the bit to take per pass. Now we're gonna go back into gadgets and back to our Create Rounding Toolpath tab. Now the cylinder diameter now set down here at 3.75. We know that our diameter of the hexagon is 3.98 at its widest. I'm going to input that value and I have my quarter inch Gini compression bit selected and click on OK. So this generates my tool path. Uh, the setting that I have on my quarter inch Gini is to step down at 0.125. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable with how this is going to potentially turn out. Click on save tool path over here. A couple of things in this settings uh, box you need to make sure you're, you're checked on. So for me, I have a pro journeyman. Uh, make sure that's input. And then for your post processor, since you're using rotary, you need to make sure you're using the Onefinity Wrap Y2A inch post processor. This is very important because it's going to tell the Onefinity rotary exactly what to do as far as this toolpath goes. So now that that's saved, I'm going to go ahead and upload the toolpath into the Onefinity. And it's indicating that we have a 32 minute and 59 second job here. So now we'll go downstairs, run the toolpath, and let's see how it comes out. In order to get this hexagon secured correctly in the rotary, I'm going to need to install two blocks on the top and the bottom so that I can install this plate. I'm going to cut this scrap piece of plywood so that it fits on the width of the hexagon and then glue it together on the top and the bottom and then install this holder plate right on top of that. I'm going to use two parallel clamps to glue the ends of these to the end of each side of the cylinder.
Okay, so both of my end caps are roughly three inch, three and seven eighths inches, um, and I actually don't have enough clearance between the workpiece and the spoil board to make a complete rotation here. So I'm gonna have to take it off and cut the corners off so that I have enough clearance. Um, this is actually pretty interesting for me uh, because I thought I had more clearance than this, but it looks like I'm not gonna have more than three and a half inches of clearance when it comes to the revolution and the spoil board. All right, so I went ahead and cut the corners off on the table saw real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this. And there it is, we've officially turned a maple hexagon into a usable cylinder stock for the Onefinity Revolution. All thanks to this bird's mouth bit. I'll go ahead and drop a link to that bit down below in case you want to check it out for your own projects. This type of stock is great for creating lightweight decorative pieces. Since the center's hollow, you're not wasting any valuable hardwood on the inside, just using what you need where it matters most. It also reduces shipping weights. In the next video, I'll fire up the laser module in VCarve Pro to add some awesome designs to this piece. And stick around because I'll also show you how we're going to turn this into a functional item, not just a pretty one. If you enjoyed this carve, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.